Well, speaking of music, it's like a separate character uh -huh. in the film. Yeah. So and Ludwig. We met in school at USC. I heard him score something for like one of my classmates, and it blew my mind. Composer Ludwig Gordonson, the mind behind Black Panther's Grammy and Oscar-winning score. Its synergy of hip hop and traditional African beats bringing Wakanda to life. The only way to do that would be to go to Africa and work with artists and instrumentalists from the continent. Senegal would be Gorenson's first stop. There, he connected with singer and guitarist Baba Mall, who would invite him to watch his tour. I think it was a good thing to do because by following my band and how the people organize the concerts that start sometime at two o'clock in the in, in the night. It's very ceremonial. The women put their jewelries, their nice clothes, indigos, all the colors. The energy is crazy. And he comes out in his traditional clothing and starts singing this, this opening hymn. And I you know, goosebumps all over my body. Maul's trumpeting vocals, which can be heard from villages miles away, introduce the hidden kingdom on the song Wakanda. Sister Nakia. My prince, we are home. Bob Mal is singing about an elephant that's died, and the elephant being a synonym for a king. When a big elephant dies, it's always a young elephant who will come to lead all the others. A new king will be chosen, which is the young T'Challa. This never gets old. These drumming sounds of the king, played by Tama master, Masamba Diop. One of the most fascinating instruments to me was the talking drum. It's a drum that sounds like a voice that you can actually talk with. That was the first type of telephone. When we came back and come to the studio in Dakar and to bring all the musicians, I remember when we were recording the talking drums, with different microphones. Ludwig was right there in the middle. We have many Senegalese people all around the world. When they went to, the, to see Black Panther, they would say, wow, this is our culture. This is what we know. Gorenson's next stop would be the International Library of African Music. So we had our cameras follow his footsteps. It was the biggest collection of recorded African music in the world. So I went there to be able to listen to as many different recordings as I could. And a lot of that music doesn't exist anymore. The library organized a musical performance by South African healers to simulate Gorenson's exposure to traditional African performances that communicate a story. As they, they are dancing, they are breaking the foundations of those prisons. Their ancestors will be free. The first song that the, the Amalkle has sang, that Ake Ko Mama Ofananaye, uh, which means there's no mother like her. Yeah. African music, you have to understand it like something that calls people to collaborate. This is what makes African music always in a movement. All the Stars is the first song that I think about uh, when I think about Black Panther. Afrofuturism takes center stage in Kendrick Lamar's chart-topping album that he curated for the movie's soundtrack. That first Black Panther soundtrack went number one on the Billboard Top 200, probably because of Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick sits on the cusp of so many intersectionalities of different stylings of hip-hop, from hip-hop music to world music to Afrobeats. There's something beautiful about what's happening with Afrobeats right now. You saw people dancing here in the United States to Afrobeats, and you saw people dancing in South Africa to Afrobeats outside of a movie theater. 
So how could they follow Black Panther's iconic sound in Wakanda forever? And we didn't want to try to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to try to recapture lightning in a bottle on this one. Um, so we went into it being more open to having lots of artists and representation from all over the world. We had African and Afrobeats and Afropop represent Wakanda. And so we needed that Mesoamerican side of music to represent Telecom. So it was an incredible journey for me to be able to go to Mexico. Some of the artists I work with there includes Aleman, Snow the Product, Vivir, and Mari. But we still were holding out hope that we could find like, like a, a marquee artist as thematically relevant as Kendrick was to the first film. Yeah. And who was that? <laughs> who was that? <laughs> <laughs> who was just a mother. Uh -huh. What was yep. it like to write with Rihanna? It was incredible. Ryan knew that this movie thematically is very much about motherhood and mothers and daughters and that relationship. And Rihanna's very publicly a new mother. Listen, if anybody is going to get Riri to give us some more music, I guess it's Black Panther. <laughs> Lift me up. was Rihanna's admiration for the world of Wakanda that inspired her to even want to see a cut of the film. And when she did, she was excited to get back into the studio. And her collaboration with Thames, this amazing Nigerian-born artist as well, and Ryan, who has a writing credit on Lift Me Up. We had the experience of going to Lagos, and, and, uh, where we met with Thames, and she recorded No Woman, No Cry for us that we used in the trailer. No woman, no cry. What's so special about this is that we recorded over four continents. It's over 2,500 hours in the studio. Over 40 different vocalists and artists. 100 piece orchestra. Two completely different cultures. Still to come. Chadwick was the only actor we discussed. How do you define a king? Chadwick Boseman and why there will never be another T'Challa. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.